What's up you data friends, it's Yanis here and welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to try to use Python in order to call Binance API to pull some crypto data into our environment. Then we are going to run correlation coefficients of Bitcoin against all of those crypto pairs we are going to list in order to identify the cryptos that have a high correlation with Bitcoin and also high or low sensitivity, which is the percentage change. And then we are going to use that correlation model in order to try and predict the value of a given cryptocurrency based on the value of Bitcoin. So for example, when Bitcoin it's 100k how much this X token is going to be. So we're going to go through all of the functions we're going to use in Python in order to create this project. And then at the end of this project, we are going to create this Streamlit app over here, which basically does exactly what I have described. So it takes as inputs the interval and then the period in terms of days, how many days you want to look back. For example, let's say I want to pull the daily data for the past 30 days, I can click get data and this is now going to pull data from Binance and run correlations against Bitcoin and also calculate the sensitivity, which is the percentage of change of all these pairs you're going to see over here against Bitcoin. There you go, you can see it finished. So the most highly correlated crypto against Bitcoin was Ethereum, then Doge, then SHIB, etc, etc. And then the one that has the highest sensitivity, which is a percentage change, was actually this cow USDT over here. We are also plotting the Bitcoin chart over here. And then in our second section is where we do the predictions. So let's say I actually want to trade a highly correlated uh, coin with a high sensitivity. In our case, we're going to use DOT, for example, that has a good correlation and also a high enough sensitivity. I can actually select DOT over here and then say, assuming the price of Bitcoin is going to hit 100K, how much is DOT going to be? So I put 100K over here, I click predict, and this is now going to use our correlation model in order to make prediction over here on DOT. And down here, we can see the scatter plot, which is showing us the relationship between DOT and Bitcoin. And also we can see the DOT candlestick chart over here. And if we scroll up again, this is the prediction. So based on the data set we have used for the past 29 days and then the daily interval, we predict that when Bitcoin hits 100K, DOT should be at $8.73. However, I wouldn't recommend you solely using this model in order to take trades or make predictions. This is just one more tool you can use in combination with other tools to make a better, more informed decision when it comes to making investments or trading. Right, and before we start this video, let me just say that if you're passionate about data analytics and data science, then please click the like button, subscribe to my channel and enable notifications for my future videos. Right, starting with the first thing we want to do, let me zoom in a bit. We want to go over our libraries we are going to use. So please make sure you have all these libraries installed. If you are missing Binance.client, then run this command over here, pip install and then python-binance and then also restart the kernel to make sure that that library is going to work. And then we also have pandas, numpy, matplotlib, seaborn, sklearn and sklearn metrics. Right, next you need to copy and paste your API key from your Binance account. So you're gonna go into Binance profile, then API management, then from there you can create a new API and then that new API is going to give you a key and a secret. So you are gonna copy that and paste it over here. And then down here, we are just initializing our Binance client by passing the API key and then the API secret. 
Next, we are going to create a function that pulls the data into our environment. So we define this function as get underscore Binance data, and this function takes as inputs the symbol, which is going to be BTC USDT, for example, the interval, which is going to be this interval you see over here, whether it's by minute, by five minutes, 15 minutes, one hour, etc., etc. And then also the loop back, which is the number of days we want to look back. Then we are calling this get historical K lines function provided by Binance client. And this function, again, it takes these three same things as our function takes and it returns a data frame. Sorry, it actually returns an object and then we are turning this object into a data frame with the following columns, as you can see over here. Then we just convert the timestamp into daytime and then all of these fields into numeric fields. And then we return the limited data set. We only want to keep timestamp open, high, low, and close. And then down here, I'm just running an example of this function to see if it works. So I'm creating a list with the crypto pairs I want to run the function on. I am setting my interval to be 15 minutes and my look back to be one day ago. And then here, what I'm doing is that I'm saying pair and then I run my function for pair in crypto pairs. So this pair is gonna start with our first pair. It's gonna run the function using this pair, this interval, this look back, and then it's gonna loop through all these different pairs we have. So if I run it again, you can see that we start with our first pair, which is this one. We have our, sorry, let me scroll down. Uh, we have our data for the first pair. And then we have our second pair, which is Bitcoin. We have the data for our second pair. Then we have our third pair, et cetera, et cetera. Right. The next thing we have to do now is that we have to take that data set we have just pulled in from above and then calculate correlation coefficients against Bitcoin and also calculate the sensitivity, which is the percentage of change. So if Bitcoin goes up by 1%, XRP is going to go up by 1.7, for example. That's the sensitivity and it's very useful because we want to identify pairs that move the most and also have a high enough correlation with Bitcoin. Right, to do this, we are creating this function over here. We are calling the function calculate correlation and it takes as input our data, which is what we have calculated before. And then we are also saying the base symbol, which is basically the symbol we are going to use to correlate everything against it is going to be Bitcoin. Down here, I'm just storing the data of Bitcoin into base data, as you can see. And then I am also setting timestamp, which is basically daytime as our index. Then I'm creating this empty object over here, which I'm gonna store our results in. And then I'm saying for pair, comma, df in data dot items. So all of these ones above here, this is, for example, our first item, the USDT try data. Uh, yeah, for pair, comma, df in data dot items. And then the pair is actually gonna come from our list over here. So this is our first pair. Uh, if pair is not base symbol, just in case we have Bitcoin in here, which we do. So we want to exclude Bitcoin because this is actually our base data. So if it's not Bitcoin, then store the data of that first pair and the data is going to be just the timestamp as index and close value in the target data. So over here, then I'm going to calculate the percentage changes. So the base data is the BTC data. We calculate the percentage change and we are also dropping an ace. And then the target data is, sorry, this target data is actually going to be the loop through all of our pairs. So the first pair is going to start with is going to be USDT try, as we said before. We calculate the percentage change and then we drop an ace. Then we are concatenating them together and then I'm just renaming the two columns. 
Then I am calculating the correlation coefficient and then I'm studying that correlation between Bitcoin and our target symbol. So the first one we said before, and I'm studying it into correlation. Then I am separating my data into X and Y because I'm going to run regression. So X is going to be our BTZ data and then Y is going to be the target variable or target symbol data just because we are actually predicting the target symbol. So down here, when we're going to run our prediction, I'm selecting the symbol, the target symbol, and then I'm predicting the target symbol value, which is this value over here. That's why my Y is actually my target symbol. Then I initialize my linear regression model. Then I fit my model and then I store the first coefficient of my model into this sensitivity item over here. Then I append my results and I'm saying my pair is going to be the first pair we said before. My correlation coefficient is going to be the correlation over here. And then the sensitivity, which is the percentage change, is going to be this sensitivity over here which is the first coefficient of our model. Then I am putting all of these into a data frame when the loop finishes. So this is going to loop through all of our symbols or pairs and it's going to repeat the same thing. It's going to store everything into correlation underscore results and it's going to put this in a data frame. And then the whole function is going to return our data frame sorted by the highest correlation coefficient symbol. Uh, and then down here, uh, let me run the function quickly and then let's test the function. So I'm just passing into my function the crypto data and this is the crypto data we created above. And then we scroll down, we can see that we have all of our pairs and then we have the correlations and also the sensitivity. Right, moving on, the next function we are going to create is going to be our predict function. And this function is going to basically train our regression model and it's going to make the prediction when we click over here and we are going to see the prediction on the top right hand side. Right, going back, uh, we are naming the function as predict underscore pair value and we are passing the data, which is going to be our uh, crypto data over here. Then we are saying the base symbol is going to be Bitcoin. We are always going to use Bitcoin as our base. Our target symbol is going to be ETH over here. However, in the Streamlit app, this is going to be variable. So it's going to be any of these pairs over here. Same thing with the Bitcoin price over here. So this target BTC price. I am saying over here is 150k, however, it's going to be variable when we create the Streamlit app. First, I am storing our base data, which is basically the Bitcoin data, and then I'm also renaming my close into close underscore base, and then I'm storing it into base data. I repeat the same process for target data, and then I just merge them together based on timestamp. Then I am separating our X and our Y so I can run my regression model. Over here, I am initializing our regression and down here, we're just feeding our regression. And then in the return, this function is going to return the prediction of this target underscore BTC price. So when BTC hits 150K, Ethereum in this case is going to be X value. So if we test it, let me run the function and then let's run the prediction over here. We can see that when Bitcoin hits 150K, Ethereum is going to be 4,900 based on our regression model. Right, and then the last thing we need to do is to create our plot. So we actually have two plots, is the Bitcoin plot and then also the plot of the predicted variable, sorry, the variable we are trying to predict. However, both of them are going to use exactly the same code. That's why I only have one plot over here. Right, we are going to use Plotly. We are going to initialize our plot by saying go.figure. And then we are going to add a candlestick plot. We are going to set our X 
buy you to be Bitcoin and then timestamp is going to be our index you can see over here then I am saying the open price is going to be the open BTC price the high price is going to be the high BTC price the low is going to be the low and then the close is going to be the close so basically the high you see over here is the week you can see that is a week on top and the low is also the low week you can see down there and then the open is going to be the low price of the candlestick so somewhere down uh, there let's say and then the close is going to be the high of the candlestick and then over here i'm just updating the layout i'm saying i don't have a title i don't have a y-axis title and then the template is going to be white and then fig.show we are just visualizing the figure so if we run it quickly we get an error and saying fig is not defined and the reason is because this is not fig it's actually btc figure that's why sorry let me rerun there we go so this is actually the current bitcoin price right now right and the last thing we have to do now is that we have to put everything together under one cell and then create a .py file and deploy that into a streamlit app However, I'm going to leave that for the next video. So I'm going to leave the functions and the Python on this video. And then on the next video, we're going to go step by step on how we can create this Streamlit app. Right. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've gained enough value out of this video. If you feel like you did, I would really appreciate it if you click the like button, subscribe to my channel and enable notifications for my future videos.